What's up guys, Erroneous here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a brand new mission champion coming to the game that I think will change everything. So, let's get into it. Alright y'all, so we've got a brand new champion in the missions, going to be probably pretty difficult to get because it's going to be time gated more than likely similar to the Ramantu champion that you can get from the missions after you complete Lydia, right? So, or rather after you complete Arbiter, then you have to complete Lydia along the way to get Ramantu, right? So this guy's going to come after Ramantu. So yeah, I've been asking for this for a while now. I've been wondering what are they going to be putting for mission champions in the future? I assumed that it was going to be maybe a mythical champion, but of course it's going to be a void legendary and I'm not mad at that. That's actually pretty sweet. It's going to be a new addition to the game, which is going to be great for those end game players who want to keep progressing in missions or just PVE in general. So I am one of those players that love to do PVE. So this will be fun for me to get back into the mission grind. So that's awesome. Of course, this champion, I've already read his kit, but he's going to be insane. So let's get into his kit here. So this guy, Marius the Gallant, he has on the A1 attacks all enemies 35% chance of placing an enfeeble debuff. And if you don't know what the enfeeble debuff is, it's kind of similar to what the Phantom Shogun's Grove places on you for enfeeble. Well, not similar. It is. So it's the same debuff. And when you get this debuff placed on you or placed on an opponent, it makes it so that that champion or your champion will end up weak hitting and they cannot crit hit. They cannot get a normal hit. It's only a weak hit. So that's really, really strong, especially for PVE. And all I'm thinking about here when I first saw this was he's going to be a god, a literal god against the Hydra heads, right? Of course, assuming that the Hydra heads can take the enfeeble debuff, right? And I'll take a look at the Hydras just to double check their kit to see their passives if they do not or cannot take the enfeeble debuff. We'll go over that later to, in this video, though. So that's really strong. Also, it books out to a 50% chance which is really, really good. AoE A1, you can put him in a stun set if you wanted to. AoE A2 as well. I mean, this guy could be absolutely bonkers. And he's a defense-based champion, so I'm going to assume he's not going to be the best hitter, but who knows? He could be a really strong nuker as well. We're only going to find that out as soon as they allow the content creators to utilize him in the uh, test server. So we'll see how that goes. And then in terms of the A2, attacks all enemies three times. Each hit decreases the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn, so he cannot be polymorphed by the second ability. He can be polymorphed by the A1, though, of course. So you got to be very aware of that. Be careful about that, too. And polymorph, honestly, it did get a nerf, but it's not as big of a nerf as people expected it to be. So more than likely, you will see this guy get sheeped, unless in the future they do another nerf to polymorph potentially, right? Now, again, that's going to be for PvP. Personally, I would utilize this guy in PvE all day long. Put him in a stun set, wave content clearer like crazy, but obviously if you're going to be end game and getting this guy, you're probably not going to want to use him for wave content. More than likely, you'll probably put him in one of your PvP teams or your high-level Hydra teams. Like, this guy could potentially be really strong for Nightmare or any Hydra for that matter assuming that this ability, this enfeeble, can land on all the Hydra heads. Now, this ability, again, attacks three times. Each hit has a chance of decreasing the duration. So against Stone Skin, you get three chances to decrease the duration of Stone Skin, which means 50-50 uh, proc three times, right? So that's pretty decent. Not insane. I guess it's better than those who do a single hit or an AoE hit and a chance to decrease duration by three, like, for example, Timmet the Fool, it's a one chance proc, but it uh, can decrease the duration by three turns, 50-50 with Timmet the Fool. Whereas this guy, it's going to decrease the duration one time per hit, which means you're going to get a 50-50 chance proc per hit against all enemies, which means you might not get the stone skin removed, or you might. It's actually kind of cool. I think, that's, I think that's a good thing. I think this is pretty strong ability. It does book out to a three turn cooldown, which is not bad. And then on the A4, or A3 rather, 
places a 50% increased accuracy and a 60% increased defense buff on all allies for three turns. That's insane as well. Wow, this guy could actually be really strong potentially for Fire Knight. Right? Because if he attacks and then grants an extra turn, it says place a stun debuff on the enemy with the highest turn meter for one turn and finally grants an extra turn. That's on a four turn cooldown, which means he's going to go back into the Death Glory, which attacks the Fire Knight's shield three times, right? Which effectively puts Galloping Thunder on like a three turn cooldown, right? And if he can place that enfeeble debuff on the Fire Knight, the Fire Knight is not going to do criticals and he's not going to do normal hits. He's only going to hit weak hits, which means in hard Fire Knight, you can actually utilize this guy and survive and do hard Fire Knight 10. That's really, really strong. This guy's going to be insane for all areas of the game. Uh, for the passive, this champion is immune to turn meter reduction effects and decreased speed, which is also good for the Fire Knight, right? For PvE, also good for PvP as well. Whenever an enemy changes form or attempts to decrease this champion's turn meter, it counterattacks using this champion's default skill, which allows you to hopefully go second, right? So you can go second... A lot of people nowadays in Live Arena, for example, this guy will be insane in Live Arena. So anybody who's going to use like a Makage, because a lot of people have her already that are later game or end game. Anybody that's going to be using uh, Crixia, this person's just going to go. He's going to use his A1, place the Enfeeble, and potentially you can go second and win with this guy. That's how powerful this guy could potentially be, assuming that he doesn't turn into a sheep, right? Because if he sheeps, if he gets sheeped, he might not land the Enfeeble debuff, so just be mindful of that. Now that's really strong though. Also, increases ally defense in all battles by 35%. Again, this guy is insanely powerful. So, you're going to want to utilize this guy in pretty much every area of the game if you can do it. He's going to be a very, very strong generalist type champion. And again, you can utilize him anywhere. A lot of people are going to use him for PvP. Me personally, I really want to utilize him in Hydra and see how crazy he could be and also in Fire Knight hard. And he could also be very strong for potentially Skavag, Tainted Skavag. I mean, he could be good in all hard dungeons, right? He could also be good in the hard um, Tainted, not Tainted Fire. What's the dragon's name? So let me take a look at the dragon. So this guy is... Oh, jeez. Tainted Hellraiser, that's what his name is. So, Tainted Hellraiser, he could be strong against this guy too. Again, he's going to, because of the Enfeeble. If he can place Enfeeble on them, he's insane. So, right now, immune to stun, free, sleep, provoke, block active skills, block passive, fear, true fear, and petrification. That He's not immune to Enfeeble. And then let's take a look at Fire Knight. Fire Knight hard. Is he immune to Enfeeble? Right now, I, my fastest team is 7 minutes, 33 seconds, and it's not consistent. Is he immune to Enfeeble? No, he's not. Also immune to the same things as Tainted Hellraiser. So all the these dungeon bosses and for hard mode are not immune to Enfeeble, which is insane, right? And then let's take a look at the Hydra clan boss. So for Hydra, let's take a look. If I go to the boss guide here. Are these heads immune to Enfeeble? So the head of Decay is not immune to Enfeeble. Crazy, right? So he's not immune. And then we've got, let's see, which this one? The head of Torment, not immune to Enfeeble. Head of Mischief, also not immune. Jeez, this is insane, right? And then the head of Wrath, also not immune. Head of Suffering, not immune. So, yeah, this is going to be crazy. This dude's going to be wild. None of them. Let's go to Nightmare. Does it make a difference if it's on Nightmare? I doubt it. Again, still not immune. So none of them are immune, which means he's going to be so strong in every area of the game. If you get it so that all bosses weak hit on you, you're just going to last so long in all the boss fights and survive for so much longer. It's insane. And then you bring in champions that increase the duration of debuffs on the enemy, and it just goes on forever. 
It's crazy. So this guy is going to be an absolute beast for anybody's account. Anybody's account. Even when you're end game, he's going to be insane. So unless he got a, gets a nerf or something, he's going to be crazy for anybody's account. You're going to want to go for this guy. This guy is ridiculous. Let me know what you guys think about this guy's kit. Let me know if you want to go for him. And you can't pull him from shards, I don't believe. So similar to Ramantu and similar to like Lydia. So you can't just pull dupes of him. And his uh, champion that you're going to want to feed into him, I believe is Tremaria. I could be wrong, but I believe it's either Tremaria or Tumesia. One or the other. So I again... I can always get that correction in the future, but I think it's one or the other. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of this guy? Do you think he's insane? Do you think he's going to be a big asset? Or do you think he's not going to be big? Do you think he's going to flop? I feel like he's not going to flop at all. I think he's going to be ridiculously powerful. And for Live Arena, he's going to be nuts as well. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing to the channel, and I will see you on a video soon. Take care.